All right, it's Steve with Happy Heart Treasures, and today we are shipping, only this is going to be a different kind of video. We're going to get right into it because I'm afraid it might be really long, and I don't want it to be too long. But uh, Donna's not feeling great. Uh, she has a migraine, I believe. So you're stuck with me. So what I'm going to do, I have 21 things, I think, right now to ship out, and I'm actually going to ship it and film me shipping it. So in case anybody wonders, how do we ship these things or that things or whatever? Uh, nothing super crazy to ship today, but there's a lot of things. I'm going to show you what sold. I'm going to do it five things at a time, and then I'll ship them, and then I'll show the next five things. So um, I don't know. We're going to try this out, see how it works. I have a camera set up here for looking down as I'm shipping, and then I have my other camera here so I can come show you the things that actually sold. And... We're going to just try this, see how it works. First thing I'm going to talk about is my mess. This is my shipping area. I'm going to show you everything today. It's a mess, right? And why is it a mess? Because that has peanuts in it. Um, those are cardboard tubes in case I ship anything like a poster or golf club or anything. That has air bubbles. People bring me a lot of things, used boxes, stuff like that, and I recycle and reuse them. It just saves me a lot of money. Um, and so, yeah, it's nice if I can have it picked up and looking nice everywhere, but at the same time, that's almost impossible to do, especially when I'm digging around trying to find just the right box for each certain thing. So, you know what, it's, it's hard to keep it all super neat and clean, but it works for me, so whatever. And then back in this room, like, that box down there, that is a box I just got today, full of 8x8x8 eight by eight by eight boxes. That's full of poly mailers. You know, so these are all full of, like, boxes and things for my back stock. It may be kind of a mess, but it works, and it gets me through the day, three times a week at least shipping. So let's get into this. We're going to show the top five things first, and we're just going to see how this goes. I don't know how this is going to turn out, so I hope you like it. Leave Definitely leave feedback for what you think of it. All right, the first five things we're going to show is Donna sold. You'll see a lot of these are really recent things that you've seen in our videos if you watch our videos. But first, Donna sold the Teaks for $60, and we're going to ship them out. That's number one. Second thing we're going to ship is this Santa. I've had this one for quite a while. It's Santa's from around the world, Mexico. That sold for $18.74. And then the next... The next thing I just listed the other day, it's a big old blown glass Santa. There's a picture of it. I'm not going to get it out. But that big ornament, that's a large one. Sold to somebody else for $16.99. And then from the bins, you guys, check this out. We, had, we do have some really good sales to show you. This is the Hill People gear. I found this in the bins of St. Louis, if you watched that video. And it sold for a full asking price of $174.99. So $175 for this bag. And that's going out now. And the fifth game, not many, fifth game, fifth item, not many books and DVDs today. No DVDs, three books, I think. Uh, Sherlock Holmes, this is still wrapped. And this goes for $19.99. So the first thing we're going to do is get these five things out the door. All right, first thing we got is Teeks. Uh, in pretty much every package, and I'm just going to talk a lot while I'm doing this. If there's one thing I'm good at, you can ask my wife, my brothers. I'm talking. I can talk a lot. Uh, first thing I do in every package, pretty much, I bag everything just in the old, in case the box gets wet, in case somebody puts it in a puddle, thinking. So I'm going to bag these because they're so shiny. I'm going to make sure they don't rub together. I'll have the plastic in between, and I just throw a piece of tape on there. And I have a two-inch roll of tape over here with a little scotch tape. got my scissors, my blade. And a marker for marking out like barcodes and stuff and you'll see how i use all that now i have stickers and thank you cards over here to put in all the packages so you kind of see my setup and how i do this so then the next thing i do if try to figure out what box i want to use for this this is lightweight it's not heavy kind of long so i look around if i just happen to have a box under there see this one came from somebody else look at that how perfect is that right so, first thing I do is make sure any labels are taken off, which this one is pretty good. They're already gone. So then, even though you can't hurt these shoes, I'm still going to put them in a little bit of bubble wrap. When I got all those huge, mungus bowls 
rolls of bubble wrap. I've probably been spoiled. I probably used more than I should, but I got them all for free, and so it's, it seems like it's never ending, although I know it will end at some point. We have one, two, three, four, maybe five more rolls, which will last me for a while, but it's going to be a bummer when they end. So we're going to put these in a little bubble wrap. I feel like somebody's watching me, so I feel like there's a lot of pressure. I just want them to uh, get there safely. Just like that will be great. I don't even need to put anything else in the box. I'll try to back up here. I'll put in the thank you card and the little sticker. I do think that we've... Donna paid $20 for those garage sale in Lexington, Kentucky. I do think we've gained a few subscribers from uh, people that we shipped to. Nobody specifically mentioned it. Three inch tape. If you don't use three inch tape, try it. You'll love it. You'll never go back. And then I overdo it. I tape each end and then I go to the top. And then like this, because this is a used box, if there's any like holes punctured like this, if you can see that, I do throw a piece of tape over it. Just for a little added protection. Normally what I do after each package, I don't, I see other people do this and they print their shipping labels in bulk. I don't. I weigh and print the label and stick it on each and every time. That way I know I don't have any issues. But all my station is all right here, right next to where I'm at. So what I would normally do, bring it over here, weigh it, make the label, stick it on, put it in my pile over here. Because I'm filming this, I'm going to actually package them, put them in a row for the five things at a time. And then I'll do all the labels at once, and then I'll move on to the next thing. So normally, I get it all completely done before I move on to the next thing, but not today. So today we're going to this. All right, Santa's of the world. Again, I'm going to put it in a little bag. And we're going to put the sticker and the card right in there. Yeah. I feel rushed because I know this video could be very long so i'm like trying to hurry that's probably not very smart so i guess i should just be like you know what the video is however long it is and whatever uh let's see what we got for boxes here's a little box that might just be perfect for this i do believe so the box is pretty rigid it's not gonna fall apart or anything so i got some extra packaging in here this is another box where it has a label on it, so I got to pick all that off, which does cost me time. Absolutely does. But boxes ain't cheap, you guys. I just, uh, a lot of the bigger boxes, you know, smaller boxes are cheaper, but the bigger boxes, they're like you're anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar a box. And when you're shipping out a lot of things, that adds up pretty quickly. So I put a little bit of bubble wrap and stick it in there, and that will be just fine just like that. So Nora, then before I can tape over this, I need to peel all the stickers off of this. So, and if I can't get all the stickers off, and I am going to, for a couple things, first of all, about the stickers. If I can't get all the stickers off, it's not that big of a deal. What I do is I use my big fat black magic marker. And I just cover up any information, and then I try to... A lot of times I'll stick the label over where the old one was, so it's hidden anyway. A um, couple things, guys. I will, while I'm doing this, I'm going to talk about a couple different topics. So in case you're just worried that I have nothing to say, because I really usually don't. I do have a couple thoughts in my head that I want to share with you. Concerning uh, YouTube, concerning reselling, and stuff like that. So that's, that's pretty good. All the information is gone that needs to be gone. Now I can tape it up. I do one on each end again, just to make sure it's nice and tight. And then I throw over the middle. And then that one is ready to go. Next up, this heavier, uh, not heavier, it's lighter. It's very light, it's blown glass Santa. He's a little bigger though, so we need a little bigger, bigger box. And right here, I got AdvoCare box. Look at that. That's a perfect fit to get some bubbles around there. Perfect. 
This one does have a lot of stickers on it, so I need to get those off first. When they ship UPS, and it's a UPS label, it's way longer than a regular, like the 4x6 that I use. So it's, it's, it's more important to get some of that off, you know what I mean? Alright, box is clear of labels. I will wrap this in a bag again. Uh, don't forget my, this is new here, the business card, the thank you cards, and the stickers. If you guys watch us, you know this is a new thing for us. So, uh, I don't always remember, sometimes I forget. So then we'll wrap this down tight. I'm, I'm honestly, guys, this is like messy. I'm usually much neater than this. <laughs> it's just weird having a camera on me. We'll grab some bubble wrap. Put a piece of tape on there. The eBay tape, I don't, I got a whole bunch of it early on. And then I used to use it on everything, the two inch, but since I switched to three inch especially, I don't care for the eBay tape on the outside of the boxes. I try to use it minimally. It just looks a little messier. But anyway, we're gonna wrap this up. Put a nice roll on there. Slide it in the box. Make sure it fits nice and snug, but not squishing anything, which that's perfect. Look at that. That's beautiful, right there. Right there, that's beautiful. Would you look at that, they say. Uh, a little bit of box. Well, now I'm a mess. This is a little bit of box folding over here I want to get correct. I get a lot of good feedback about my shipping because I overdo it. But I don't generally get returns for broken items, so that's worth it to me for a little bit extra. And because this box is like one of them folded together bottoms, I'll actually put tape over that too. Just for a little more sense of safety and security. Alright, that ornament is ready to go. Alright, help people gang. $175. Does this get special treatment because it's $175? Absolutely it does. Um, might upgrade for priority shipping. That's one of the things, especially since I do two days shipping and this sold two nights ago. So like it has to go out today, but especially like if it's the second day and it's an expensive item like this, I will even fork out, if I had it for ground advantage, and it's a couple more bucks to ship priority. I will do it just to get it there as soon as I can. For if because it's an extra day. Like if they would have bought it last night, I wouldn't worry about it too much. But you know what? For them to pay full price, for them me to get it out to them as soon as possible and them to be happy is super important to me. So let's see what we put. They did ground advantage. I did ground advantage. The priority is actually only 30 cents more expensive. So it's just going to Indiana. And so Indiana from here is not very far. We were just going through there a couple days ago. So I will fork out the extra 30 cents and maybe get it there a day quicker. So we're going to put it in a priority mailbox. We're going to put it in here, put a little paper. I won't eat, you guys, I won't even put in not matching paper in the same package. I'm, I'm really dumb about stuff. But, it's just the way I am. So we'll put a little paper in there, put our bag in there, throw some more paper in. And I have other things like the air air pockets, air pads I use. Um, can't get this paper. I have peanuts I use if it's breakable sometimes. It's 
kind of a lot of paper, a little excessive for something that doesn't break, but remember it's $175 too. I want it to be, I want the customer to be as happy as possible. All right, that is ready to go. Priority shipping right there. Next up, the complete Sherlock Holmes book. This can go media mail. I actually have media mail boxes that I can use. Not, they're not media mail boxes, but I bought boxes just for books when I got that buyout. So I think we're gonna use one. These are like 13 by 13 by five or six. I don't even remember. Doesn't say on it. So we're gonna do that. Again, I do the ends extra and the reason I do it is so I can grab each side and make it tight just on the end because I don't I don't like shipping if there's a big gap so this book it's in plastic already so they paid $19.99 I'm gonna put it in another bag anyway just Safety first. I mean, the bags are like a penny a piece or something. I don't even know. But they can't be more than like two cents a piece. I'll put the sticker. Oh, see, I don't think in the last one, $175 item, and I don't think I put the sticker and the thank you card in it, but I'm not changing it now. This item came from that $700 buyout we did. Now, I don't want this to get banged up in there. It's got, you know, corners on a hard cover, so I will wrap it in some bubble wrap. Also, this is difficult too, because normally when I'm shipping, I have music or a podcast on. If it's football season, it's always usually a sports podcast, but football is over. I will still listen to sports podcasts for another week or two. It's the Masters weekend. College basketball just ended. Um, I like hearing about the Masters. But once this is over, I'm not really into baseball or the NBA much. So I'll listen to a couple podcasts here and there. But then we do a lot more music during the summer. I'm a football guy. So now it's all safe and secure drop it in there and then we'll add a little so like here I got this bag and this bag has nothing but air pillows in it so we can add a few air pillows in here actually there's not even enough room for it on that side put a little bit of tissue on this side just to hold it in there from moving around and wrap it up That's number five. Now, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go over the computer. I'm gonna print the labels, weigh them, measure them, print them, everything for those five, and then we'll jump into the next five. All right, those five are ready to go. By the way, media mail, this is media mail, it's a book. If you're shipping media mail and it is heavier than like four or five pounds, check the rates because media mail used to be such a good deal and it's not, You sometimes if it's clear close enough, you can get, uh, ground advantage for cheaper maybe even priority mail for cheaper so definitely check the rates don't forget to do that this is going to california so it's not cheaper so let's get the next five items all right next up we got this hallmark santa i just listed this the other day and that is a toy maker santa and it sold for 1550 and then from lexington kentucky just saw this in the video the peanuts crochet kit Got this for a dollar, sold it for $36.99. That's a super cool find right there. I mean, how unique is that? How hard would it be to find that thing anymore? Crazy. And then we have Alone and Unafraid. This book, Patriot Defense and Survival Guide, sold for $12. And then we have, here's a couple of the other more strange, harder to ship things. This is a long box, Stratego. This is from 1977 Stratego board game. That sold for $33.74. And lastly, this set of three, all three of them look like this. 
They are Poppy Trail Homestead Provincial Blue mugs. And the three of those sold for $21 plus shipping. So we got some breakables. We got a long uh, item and then a few other things. So let's get those gone. All right, first up, a little Hallmark ornament. These, again, put it in plastic, protect it from water. Um, this is where I use my favorite box, and I don't, you know, I have a few that I can use, but sometimes, especially when I'm feeling lazy and don't feel like uh, scraping the scraping the labels and all that, I just grab my my little eight by six by four box here. My favorite box to use they're easy i always make sure to have a bunch here i try not to use them all the time because i want to use up the, the ones i got for free first but just right now in the interest of time i just want to use that so this is piece of cake he's an easy fit in there grab a little bit of bubble wrap throw them in there again i'm sure i overdo it with the bubble wrap this is quite a bit here well whatever Sure, I overdo it with the bubble wrap, but it's easy to just make sure it's safe. Throw the thank you card in there if I can get it. Sticker. A little too much bubble wrap. Pushing out a little bit, but what it works. Piece of cake. There you go. Next up, Peanuts Crochet Kit. What should that go in? Um, looking around, it's different because it's it's so wide. Um, I have 10 by 10 boxes. I got 8 by 8 boxes. I got a lot of different boxes. This isn't priority mail, so we're probably going to use a book box. Yeah, we're going to use a book box. Uh, it's just for safety and protection. I mean, it's $36.99 or something like that, so well worth it. Make sure it gets there safely. So I watched a couple different podcasts last night. Um, one was Two Old Guys Podcast with my gosh, because I'm filming, I'm drawing a blank. Josh is on there and Caleb. The old paths and uh, Alabama Jaybird resale. If I screw something up, guys, it's just because I'm filming and trying to hurry and stuff. But they were talking about that a topic is there are too many reselling podcasts, and they said somebody was complaining about. Are you guys tired of? Yeah, that'll fit perfectly. Put a little bubble wrap around it. That'll be great. Somebody was complaining about how many reselling podcasts there are, and. But their point was, and I totally agree with it, if somebody's going to complain, go out of their way to complain about something, why don't you just not watch them? Why are you going out there onto these podcasts or onto these YouTube channels that do the podcasts and complain about them? Like, just watch something that you like. You know? Why do you waste your energy on things you don't like? But... And I don't, I totally agree with that. It makes no sense to me. So many people are so negative. I always say, this is funny because I'm talking about this on YouTube. But I always say, and I always told my kids that social media would be the downfall of society. Which is funny because I'm on YouTube saying this. Um, because back in the old days... If you didn't like something, you just didn't like it. You might tell your friends about it and go on about your day and you don't have to worry about it or bring it up again until you're faced with that situation. Like even if it's just a person in school or whatever or at work, you deal with it, you go home and you kind of forget about it. But nowadays, like with my kids, with the reselling stuff or anything, it's constantly in your hand in front of your face all the time. And so when something's bothering somebody, they... Everybody has a voice, and everybody feels like they need to share their voice. Everybody has a right to. That's fine. Like, if you want to comment on this video and say how much it sucks, that's fine. Go right ahead. I have no problem with it. 
because I'm asking for it by putting this video out. That's if I'm going to put it out in a public space, I have to be ready for if I get any negative type of feedback. But if you're going out of your way just to say something negative, then like why are why are you wasting your time doing that? It just makes no sense to me. I don't I don't get it. I know there's some people that are trolls that do it on purpose, just trying to stir the pot, trying to get a reaction, whatever. But I don't know. It just makes no sense to me. I have too many things going on in my life that I don't have the time to be going on and trying to stir any pots and try to get somebody riled up or whatever. So I don't know, whatever. This book was $12, so since it's $12, it's going in a poly bag, which is absolutely fine for books. It doesn't have the hard corners like a hardback book. Normally, I would put the sticker and the thank you card inside the plastic, but I'm talking, so I didn't. So we'll put that in there. And I fold it up so it's snug in there. I don't... And then I tape these edges just to make sure where there's a gap like this. I don't want that to get caught in any kind of sorting machine or anything like that. So I just tape them. Tape them so they're sealed. And then sometimes I will take it and I'll even fold it over and tape this. And I'm actually going to do that here. Because then it doesn't slide around. It's one solid piece. So I'm going to do that here. What I'll actually do, I'll take a little piece of tape a big old piece of my three inch tape and go down the whole thing around the edges it's not the most beautiful thing in the world but that book will get there safely okay next up we have this long item this is over just over 19 inches long which is bigger than a lot of boxes that I have. I might actually have one. I do. I think I have a box that'll work. Normally what I would do with this is there's priority mailboxes. I don't know if they paid priority mail or not, but there's priority mailboxes that are like this. And what I would do is put it like that. I'd get another one of these boxes. I'd cut it and Franken box it together, tape them together. As long as they're not flat rate boxes, they're just regular priority mailbox. You can Frankenbox them. You can change the size and the shape or whatever, as long as it goes priority mail. I might still do that. Let's take a look at this box. You know what? I am going to do that. I got good news. I even had it as priority mail, so that's great. So I am going to do that. And this box there, I actually have a smaller one. It might fit a little better. Let's let's see if it'll fit in here. And it will. So I'll get two of these smaller ones. Here is how we Frankenbox. We're going to get a lesson today in shipping if you don't know how to Frankenbox. If you're still watching this video. If you're still watching this video, by the way, and it's like two thirds of the people that watch the videos are not subscribed. If you've stuck around this long, then might as well subscribe. I don't always show my shipping, but I mean, if it, if it goes well, if the video does well, maybe I'll do this again. Usually it's just me and Donna talking. She's easy to talk to. She's my better half. So, so there is our one end to start with. Uh, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna wrap this bag, this uh, game up. I also open it up. If anything is like loose and shakes a lot, which is not bad, but if anything shakes a lot, I will put like crunched up paper or something inside of it to make it secure, but this is not bad. So we're gonna my bags will not go the whole way, the whole way, so we will use two bags, just like we're gonna use two boxes. It's close, but not quite. And I will and you know what? I'm even going to remember to put a sticker and a thank you card in here inside the plastic. How's that? This is so weird not like filming this and having to not just having like music or podcasts on. It's a little weird, but it's all good, right? I mean, if you're still watching, thank you. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we're going to tape this. 
snug. And then down here we're going to tape them where they come together, just on each side. Not a big deal. We don't need it super tight or anything in there. It's all good. Uh, now, in order to go in here, see how much room we got. Got room for about a couple layers of bubble wrap. So, you know, I love my bubble wrap. And the bubble wrap is a little bit wider than the game, so that will be give protection on the sides. This thing has been listed for a long time. Let's check that. That's about perfect right there. That is nice. So, let's wrap this up, throw that down. Okay. I'm just going to tape the ends around here. All right, now, put it in our first box. That is a beautiful fit. So now we're going to take that other box, and I want it to be, let's, let's close one end. I put tape, this, the glue is good on these boxes. I put tape on just for safety precaution. So I want this to be this tall, right here. So basically where these flaps are here, this opens. I want it to come to right here, like just past that flap to tape it. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna just eyeball about to here. And it does not have to be perfect. That's why I won't use a resizing tool or anything like that. It does not have to be perfect. And I'm just gonna cut this box. Add about that level. Now here, where it feeds over these flaps, it you know it's the same dimension, it's the same size, so it's you know you have to squish it, squish it in there good. So I take and I cut a sliver off of each one. This is probably me being extra, but you know whatever. So now, when I push it together, you know it, it's smaller, so that box will slide over it really easy. Now, this, I try to match up which side it is to match up and slide this over. Just like that. There you go. Tape it real good. Which I do just a piece on each side to start it, to hold it in place. And I just tape the crap out of tape the crap out of it. I say. Now that is not going anywhere. That's. That is how you Franken box priority mailboxes and ship a game right there. Now my measurements, it's right at 20. Man, right at 20. I don't ever want to get overcharged more, so I'm going to put 21 inches because it's just maybe a hair. So 20 by 12 by 3. Oh, I got to do the mugs first because I'm not doing the labels yet. But anyway, I'll do that in a little bit. All right, three mugs. Three mugs, pretty decent size. Uh, let's see, for a box, let's go with, I think we have this Mary Kay box. Yeah, it's more that. Mary Kay hey box, yeah, we can wrap them and have them side by side by side. Um, they did pay ground shipping and it is all the way in Louisiana. And if I went priority mail, because these would fit in one of the regular square priority mailboxes like we did earlier, but it would charge me several dollars more to do that. So I definitely don't want to go priority mail. I 
want to stay ground. So we're going to take the time to get the labels off of here. All right, so I'm just going to black that out, uh, the important information. And then when I put the label on, I'm going to put it on over that. So that's why that's okay. So, okay, we're going to bag these up. Actually, see, these we won't bag because, I mean, they're porcelain. I'm going to wrap them in bubble wrap nice and tight and secure. And we'll just do it that way instead of putting them in bags. And these are not delicate. Like, these mugs are solid. So it would take a... It would take quite a uh, throw of the box to break these. I'm not that concerned about them. Not that I'm challenging any post office workers. I'm not about that life. They say that if you put fragile stickers on it, it's like issuing a challenge. So, I actually, I don't know if that's true or not, but I do not do fragile stickers. Because, I figure if I wrap it safe enough, then I don't need to tell them it's fragile anyway. Just in case you get that one worker that's having a bad day and tired of the crap and says, you know what, I don't care if your crap's fragile. Because everybody has a bad day. Not that they're going to break something intentionally, but things happen. So I wrap that up nice and snug. Tape it up good. And that, is, you know, that is secure. So we'll put, we'll end up doing three of them right along here. It'll be just fine. If you're still watching and you're like, what am I doing watching this idiot? I'm, I agree with you. But I'm going to put chapters at the beginning of each like five things. Like when I go to show the next five items, that'll be another chapter. So you can, if you just want to see what's sold, you can jump around to the chapters and see what's sold. And not have to watch me do all this. But if you are still watching, you rock. Battery's about dead on that camera, so I'm going to have to go get another battery. Alright, those things are wrapped excessively well. They are completely safe. I am totally comfortable with that. Throw a sticker and a thank you card in there. And I am confident they will have a safe journey in their pretty Mary Kay box. Going wherever it is they're going. Was this the Louisiana one? Not sure. All right, I'm gonna ship these five things out and then uh, switch the battery and then we'll get the next five things. All right, we have the next five things that sold here. Hallmark ornament sleigh ride with eight reindeer. Four boxes of two reindeer each, the sled, with Santa, and that sold for $99 plus shipping right there. So we're gonna get that out for $100. Sergeant Rock comic book, this sold, I had it listed for $50, so I offered 40, sold that for 40. Columbia shirt, been on for quite a while, so we offered 10 bucks for it, I took it, so $10 for that. This I just listed last night, like late at night. Got this at a garage sale in Kansas, and it is West Britain. The brand and their little uh, figurines you can see them in there um, they're little figure like lead now the guy on the right he's supposed to have a pipe out of his mouth and he doesn't and the bucket that's to by his feet is supposed to have a wire and be hanging from his hands so it's not there's another one of these listed that's correct listed for like 70 75 bucks so I put in the description I put read description and I put in there about those two things that's wrong and I listed it lower. I listed it at $39.99 and it sold almost instantly. Like seriously, that sold fast. So uh yeah. $39.99 going out the door. And the last thing, we let the listed this a while ago, and this is a fast seller. These things sell fast if you get these new. Um, but we're like, why didn't this sell quicker? When we look at the listing, for some reason it just has one stock photo. So the actual photos that we took did not get put on there so obviously that would scare some people away but it did eventually sell for $31.99 so 
Gotta get that out too. All right, change the battery out. I change the battery out. Let's go. So these hundred dollars. I'm probably shipping these in a priority mailbox, just easier. Let me check and see what I got. Never mind. I put ground advantage and priority is like five or six bucks more. It's going to New York. So we're gonna find us a box for this. I got just the box. I got a bunch of these boxes from a reseller here, bought pallets, and he ended up, I think he ended up with like a whole bunch of these. So I bought several boxes of this size. I think this will work. Let's see. Maybe it won't. Maybe it will. It will. That'll work. Oh, we want to bag this, especially when it's the value is there. We definitely want to take the extra steps, to make sure it's well protected. So anyway. Watching that, I know I, I stray all over the place, but watching that, what, watching that uh, podcast last night, Caleb said something that I just loved. He said, everyone, well, not everyone, people always want you to succeed, but they don't want you to do better than they are. And I just thought, that's heck of a quote. I think that's pretty accurate. And so... I reached out to some of my friends, some of my reselling friends, and I told them, I love that quote, but I want y'all to have Harry Tornado-like success. You can blow me away, leave me in the dust. I want success for everybody. So I don't care if they pass me, I'm okay with it. But anyway, yeah, should be one more reindeer. Still in the box. Get him wrapped up. What's the other thing? The other thing, I watched the Reselling Water Cooler. Resellers Water Cooler Podcast, is that the name of it? Um, with Bearded King Picker and Soda City Flips and one guy I'd never seen before and then Rocky Top Flipper. I'm sorry if I get that wrong. Rocky Top, Rocky Mountain. Dang it, I'm not good with names. I just watch. And what were they talking about that really struck me? I was going to tell Donna about because I was actually up later than she was last night. Oh, I remember. Their topic for the night was, Does doing a YouTube video, is making YouTubes hurt your reselling business? And I thought they had a great discussion on that. Um... I wanted to chime in. It wasn't live. I was watching it back. It's hard for us to catch live shows because usually people are live when we're busy. And oh, that was a great discussion. I was going to comment and I never did. Um, yeah. Does doing this YouTube hurt our reselling business? Yes. My answer is absolutely it does. Because this stuff takes a lot of time. I mean, this is slowing me down shipping these packages. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when I go later and make this video. This is like two, three hours of stuff that I'm going to try to condense down as much as possible and edit this video. So it definitely takes away time that I could be reselling. Dang, that is just a little too big. I'm going to make a couple adjustments here. Take a little bit of bubble wrap off this one. And I think we'll be okay. Um... So anyway, I, I think that it hurts the reselling business because I could be listing. Obviously, I have to ship, but when I'm doing videos, I could do more listing, more sourcing. I mean, we go sourcing anyway, but do more listing, but we enjoy it. If you are in YouTube for the money, then you should find something else to do. Every now and then... You're going to get a Harry Tornado-like person that their channel blows up or, you know, a Rally Roots or Bearded Thrift or whatever. You know, these big, big channels 
and that's awesome. I have nothing but great things to say about them. But for the average YouTuber, like myself and Donna, and a lot of the people that we know, uh, we're not in for the money. We are not making much money at all, but we enjoy it. Now, if we keep doing this for five years, we have a five-year plan. Who knows where we'll be in five years? But for right now, we're doing this because we enjoy it, not because we're trying to make money, that's for sure. This book sold for $40, so like we did earlier, it's going to get the whole bubble wrap, good box treatment to make sure it's safe. Because we don't want that $40 book not getting delivered safely. So anyway, I don't know, what are your thoughts? If you're a reseller and you don't do YouTube, have you ever thought about it? And what's holding you back from doing it if you've thought about it? And if you're a YouTuber and a reseller, do you what do you think? Do you think it wastes time? What's your why do you do it? I guess why do you do it? What's your goal? Are is your goal to make money? Or is your goal something else? Everybody that watches us a lot knows our story about why we started YouTube. We went full time. We did it just for our moms because they were a little concerned about what we were doing. And we thought, well, this would be fun. Make it for our moms, for our families. And that's literally why we started it. And here we are now, almost three years since we started the YouTube. Actually, I think we, we're not three years from our first video, but we made the account. Uh, I think it's been just over three years since we made the account. And here we are, and we actually got monetized, and that was exciting. But we, you know, it's not part of our business income. Let's just put it that way. The little bit that we've gotten and that we're going to get is awesome, and we appreciate it, and we appreciate everybody that watches us, but you know, we're not here to make money. We're doing it because we enjoy it. But yeah, making picking videos, going through the garage sales, and doing like this video here, way harder and way more time consuming because you got so much footage to go through and edit. So hopefully people appreciate it and like it. Smash that like button if you really do appreciate it and like it so that we can see that, hey, people dig it. All right, another one down. This little fella here, $39.99. He'll fit in my favorite little box, so that's the way he's going. I have many times thought about, a lot of YouTubers we watch do lives, and some will do live listings, like while they're listing. Some will do live while they're shipping. And I have thought several times about, instead of making a video like we're doing this, but like just going live, turning on the video, turning on the camera, having it live, and just chatting people while I'm shipping. But the two things that hold me back on that are A, it can be hard to get things done when you're watching and chatting with people, watching comments, and B, I ship here and every time I finish a package, I go over there and I do the label. You know, I don't do it like I'm doing it today, obviously. And so, there'd be a lot of back and forth and running around. I don't think that'd make for a good live video. So, I don't know how to fix that problem, other than change how I do things, but how I do things works for me. So, I don't know. I just, <laughs> this is like a live, except that I can't see anybody commenting. But I don't know if anybody will actually still be watching at this point, so I might just be talking to myself. Next up, piece of $10 clothing. This is a piece of cake. Got these poly mailer bags. 
I get them. I, I buy them off eBay off of like other resellers that got them for free from their store or whatever, and then they sell them for actually cheaper than, I don't know, they're pretty cheap. So I get some every now and then just for some clothing items. Slide that in there. Oh, I forgot the thank you card, but that one's just going without. And then I always, like I said before, I tape up the edges just to make sure no loose flaps get caught in the machine or anything like that. That's me being extra, I guess. So that one's done. And then this front line for cats, it's long. I could probably go in a bubble mailer, I think, instead of putting it in a box. I don't think you're going to hurt that. There, yeah, we'll throw it. I don't even, we'll put it in a bag just so we can put the thank you card and sticker in it. Otherwise, I don't even know if I'd put that in a, in a bag. I mean, you're not going to hurt it, but we'll throw a sticker and a thank you card in there. Throw it in there. And then tape the edges again, like I mentioned before. And that's done. And that's my man. When I sell clothes and things like this, that's nice shipping right there. You can knock those out really quick. So that's done. All right, that's the number 11 through 15. I'm going to get the labels on those, get those out in the pile. And then we have six more to go, but two of them go to the same buyer. So we have five more. So we're three fourths of the way done. If you're still with me, we got one more set to go. All right, this is the home stretch, guys. The last five things. Here we go. Number one, here is a replacement base for a vacuum pump. I don't know nothing about this. I just know that my friend Larry, who's moving, brought it over and said, hey, this is like 30 bucks on eBay. What do you know? I listed it and overnight it sold $29.99. Next up, we have this little porcelain deer figure. It's a porcelain ceramic. Ceramic deer figure. It says something on the bottom. Inaru, Japan, I don't know. $14.50, so he will get very carefully wrapped up and sent out. Then next we have a watering can Sensi. There's a bulb in there. Put your wax up on top here. Kind of a cool Sensi, unique design, $14.50. And then from a state sale a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, this Beverly Hills Hotel bar of soap. Pretty cool there, huh? Uh, paid five bucks. Sold for $16 for shipping. And then lastly, somebody ordered not one, but two ornaments that I just listed. And they sold for the red one. Bread box sold for $23.99. Father Christmas 2020. And Father Christmas 2018 sold for $21.99. So the two of those can go out together. So that's a total of, what, $45? About well, $46 right there for those ornaments. So that's the last batch everybody and then we're gonna get all this stuff gone so we're almost there we've almost made it let's go all right first up this pump base uh it's rigid plastic that's not going anywhere so we can easily do that with a small bubble mailer i'll just throw it in there let's throw a thank you card and a sticker in there Slap that baby down. And that's done. Again, I'll tape the sides. Man, I love them ones that are easy to ship. Huh, done. All right, this really cool little deer. This is breakable. So this one we're going to take a little more care than with the pump base. We're going to put it in a bag like we do. Which 
just to protect it. First of all, now we're gonna he's gonna go in a little little box like this. Uh, let's see how tall he is. Actually, to leave a little more room, let's use a little bit bigger box. We have eight by eight by eight boxes. I don't use them very often. I really like them, but, but I just want to be sure that it doesn't get broken. This is overkill right here. This is a way too big a box for this little guy, but you know what? It is what it is. Because I am confident. So I roll it up and then like around the neck and head, I like put some extra bubble, like I fill that space in first. Just uh, so there's not empty dead space there. And then I'll wrap it up. And I will be absolutely 1000% confident that this is going to get there safely. Which is the goal. Now, we don't have to use all bubble for this. Because there's so much dead space to fill. I will actually use like air pillows to fill the space. Like right here. We'll put some of that in with it. And then that's it. And that is safe and secure. Bambi will be just fine. Guys, I can feel the end coming. We are almost there. Three more packages. All right, this Sensi, there is a light bulb in here. So I'm going to just put some tissue paper in there. Actually, some packing paper. Just lightly. I don't know that it matters. But I just want a little something just holding everything kind of together. Uh, this is glass, so I'm going to do this separately. I'm not going to put it back on. Um, so we're going to put this in a bag. I'm going to keep the cord outside the bag. Don't ask me why. I just don't think it needs to be rubbing up against the actual item. Now we're going to put bubble wrap. You'll see what I mean. Now we're going to bubble wrap without the cord at first. Once or twice. Then we'll add the cord along the side. And then bubble wrap it into the package. Like so. And then we can go... It's an odd shape so it keeps rolling around. But we can actually turn it. Kind of make it into like a ball. Does it make sense? Man, if you're still watching this, I love you. <laughs> you're awesome. I hope Donna's still watching this. When she sees this. Hope she doesn't shut it off. But, anyway. So that is safe now. We got a little piece of bubble wrap here that I tossed aside earlier. We're going to wrap this glass piece up in it. And that can go too, just like that. So now I need a box big enough, which uh, maybe an 8x8x8 eight by eight by eight again. Might be the T, as the kids say. Do any kids say the T anymore? I don't think so daughter would probably look at me and be like, what's wrong with you? And I'd be like, I raised you. What's wrong with me? What are you talking about? You did this to me. That's what I would say. I'd blame her. You, you did this to me. Yeah, that fits nicely. Look at that. It's almost like I know what I'm doing, but I don't. Uh, sticker and a thank you, which I think we forgot last time. That's the way it goes sometimes. And get it nice and tight. Up, nope. boom, we're down to two. 
Beverly Hills soap. Okay, so this sits in here a little loose. Like it wiggles around, so I'm hoping I'm gonna find maybe just a little piece of tissue paper. And that's why I keep them totes back there. Yeah, they're messy, but sometimes I can have little scraps that can come in really handy for other things. Like this. We're going to try this. I don't know if it's gonna work for sure. Might be too thick. That's too much. Maybe we'll just put like a little strip around it or something. Let's try that. Can you see that? I'm just gonna try a little strip just to kind of hold it in place. And maybe a little piece on top. Just like that. And then, boom, safe and secure. Now we'll put that, because I don't want it to pop off. I'm gonna put that in a plastic bag and I'm gonna tape it, you know, tight to keep it secure and closed in the plastic bag. And that, my friends, is why I keep little scraps in these totes that are messy. Now that is a simple, let's just do this in the interest of time. Another one of these boxes. I'm gonna throw this in, uh, just do some paper. Thank you, card and sticker. There we go. Now we make a safe trip to wherever it's going. Beverly Hills! I don't think it's actually from Beverly Hills, it's just from Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills Hotel. Last thing, two ornaments. Paid 40, what did I say, $46? So they definitely are getting some care. We're going to wrap each one individually. Keep it safe from the wetness. like to be overly careful, I guess. All right, what box should we use for this? You know what, we're gonna stay on a roll. We're gonna use an eight by eight by eight again because it's right here, I know it'll work. And then we can say we're done. Now we're going to take these two together, and yeah, they'll fit in there nicely, and then we're going to wrap bubble wrap all together here. So if you're a reseller, and you watch this all the way through, what do you do vastly different? Or do you do something vastly different? Do any of my methods seem really stupid? I think the over, over taping, over wrapping maybe, is a little much, but... Like I said, everything gets there safely. I have happy customers. Happy customers means less returns. Slide that in there. Uh-oh. It might be too, too much on the lid. Help. Actually, we're going to take this now a little bit. There's too much in the end to squish together. So if we just wrap a little less thick. It will take away some of that on the ends. And then it will fit right in there. Like so. 
I can use this on the I can use this on the sides just to kind of fill the rest in. So still got the same amount of packing. Thank you card and sticker. Shove them down in there. That's it. 21 things, 20 packages. I'm going to put the labels on. We're going to take these to the post office. And we're done until Monday. And then we start all over again, hopefully, with a lot of things to sell. Uh, if you made it through this whole video, thank you so much. If you made it through the whole video and you didn't like or you didn't subscribe, man, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe. That would be awesome. Uh, Donna should be back just fine on Monday when we pick things up. We do have a video coming for we went garage selling yesterday and wore the gopros and so we will have a picking video coming out not sure when it's coming out exactly sunday monday something like that so be watching for that but for this video this is the last package we have made it we are done and we are ready to move on to something else thanks for watching everybody see ya